about the Islamic world. So you can see, you know what Samuel Huntington had cooked up in order to justify these wars before Iraq, and he said, the, uh, the clash of civilizations, and he said, you can only know who you are when you know who you hate. Now, no religion has ever, no person has had the experience that you only know who you are when you know yourself and, and how you're part of a larger whole, and that you love it. I want to remind us when you said, how do you think like water? You know the word Sharia, which has been so messed up as Islamic law? You know what its meaning is? The sacred law, the way, which in Sanskrit is Rita. But because Islam rose in the desert, the way is the path of water. And I think we should reclaim Sharia as that path to one humanity through water. And start <laughs> defending <laughs> the values of the The young man, obviously, He's hiding here. was part of Occupy Wall Street. You part of Occupy Wall Street. Yeah, this is my Occupy four years old now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> They'll never forget the 99%, among other things. I love to reuse the 1%, brilliant. Yeah, the 1%. That, that's what the point I want to make. Once the consciousness is developed, whether our educational system, whatever we all spoke about, the next step is the small community. The former head of the Tennessee Valley Authority in the 1930s, his name was Arthur Morgan. And he, he resigned before World War II. And he went all over the world trying to answer the question, how does change occur? What is the instrument that can cause change to occur? And he came back, he went to India, Japan, he went everywhere. Uh, and he came back with his answer. And his answer was the title of his book, The Small Community. That's the start of it all. And why is it a small community? Because it's feasible, isn't it? Because it's personal, isn't it? Because it involves people you ordinarily would know. Neighbors, co-workers, family. The small civic community. And just near here in Kingston, there's a businessman who got totally fed up with the marauding empire and how we're pushing people around killing civilians and saying that's collateral damage and blowing up our budget and doing exactly what Eisenhower warned against, which is the military industrial complex as a threat not just to our economy but to our liberties. He added that in his farewell speech in 1961, which you can get on the internet. He started a group called OccupyPeace.us, meaning us. OccupyPeace.us, and he had an event a few days ago in Kingston, and he wants to go nationwide. Nationwide in terms of a cluster of small communities all over. That is what the political entrenched people fear most, because it's not going to be led by one person and one big national group. They can't control it. It's diverse, it's innovative, it's home-based, they can't control it. So, why not everybody here think of how they can start a small community? And I'll give you two, two quick proposals. If, if there are 3,000 colleges and, and community colleges and four-year colleges in the U.S. They all teach government. They all have a political science department. And they teach Congress after a fashion. What if they had a course called Congress 101? And all the students did every semester was study the behavior in great detail of the two senators and representatives and put out reports at the end of the semester with the various subtopics uh, parceled out to the students, like the voting record, the committee record, the financing of the campaigns, the constituent service, on and on. Just divide it all up. You imagine 3,000 courses, or even 1,000 courses. Congress 101, very simple, doesn't require new buildings, new money, nothing. And they'll learn far more about Congress than a kind of rote learning with a 600-page political science text that's like reading a, you know, a, a ton of sawdust without butter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it empowers them. And the first thing they'll realize is right away, by congealing knowledge relating to specific members of Congress, they become among the most important factor in the senators' and representatives' lives. Because of the internet, because of their ability to diffuse it, and because they keep handing it out from one semester to another. It never goes away, they can't wear them down, it just goes forever, year after year after year. In the process, the students will learn not to be spectators. They'll learn how to shape power. They'll learn how to participate. They'll learn how to diminish it. They'll learn how to develop grassroots democracy. What's the big deal on that? Why can't anybody do that? Uh, you've got teachers who know how to teach it. They're tired of the students falling asleep in class. Uh, the senators and representatives will come like this. They'll be summoned. What's wrong with that? Why, why don't we do things like that? Why aren't we as creative uh, as we are about where we think our sports fans should go, where our sports teams should go? Because we, we grow up civically dull, you see? 
we really start churning it up. It all starts with your own self-respect. Tons of ideas out there. And they're just waiting for you to put into effect. If you accept that 1% or less can change it, backed by public opinion, and you believe in the small community. Because a lot of people say, oh, how can you take on this big senator with just a few people here and a few people there? That's how it all starts. That's how it grows. And that's how it cannot be snuffed out. Because it is not centralized power. It's dispersed power, brings in a lot of ideas, and you connect the generations. There's a huge gap between the young and middle-aged and older people. Whatever happened to the respect for older people in terms of their wisdom, as far as young people are concerned? That's, 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 a, that's, a big, that's a big asset there. That's a big asset. My message to young people is, Take that stupid smartphone and throw it away. <laughs> because you, you think it's a great thing in your hands. You have no idea what it's doing to you in terms of the opportunity cost. You have no idea what it's doing to you. It's devouring you. It's controlling you. It's obsessing you. It's trivializing you. Throw it away. Look at people eye to eye. You can't even get petitions anymore because people are going by and they like this. They don't even look at you on the street. And who do you think is programming this stuff? Who do you think is feeding your narcissism? It's a matter of self-respect. I still use an Underwood typewriter. <laughs>